glory. Hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior in the sky, it seems that now I almost see all the same in bed. Rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. With the twinkling of an eye, change within to be. All the living saints to fly to that We began to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join that song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, oh what a singing, oh, what a shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what a glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. I said, oh, what a singing, oh, what a shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what a glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the Good evening. It's great to see everyone tonight. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of the Lord. Good to see everyone. We just want to welcome everyone to our Wednesday night service. We welcome you if you're joining us via live stream. Welcome to Post Town First Church of God. We're so glad that you've joined us. If you get a moment, call someone, have them join in or share it to your page and uh, we'll reach more folks for the, for the kingdom. So we just thank the Lord for the technology that he's blessed us with. But we just come expecting great and wonderful things tonight. I hope you've come expecting. So uh, just looking forward to what God has in store for us. Just want to start the service again with some scripture. One of my favorite scriptures. I know it's probably one of yours as well. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And boy, we need him. We need him more today than we've ever needed him in our lives and in our nation and we need healing for our land so let's just continue to pray and trust that god is in control because i know he is amen join with me please as we open with some prayer our precious heavenly father we praise you and thank you lord that you are our refuge you are our strength you are our help lord that you'll never fail us you'll never leave us you're that sure foundation and lord that we thank you lord that you are Lord, in control of every situation. Lord, you are moving in ways we cannot see. But Lord, we just trust you tonight in the midst of all the turmoil and trouble that we see all around us. Lord, we just thank you that there's a peace that passes all understanding. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who is the Prince of Peace. And so, Lord, we thank you that, Lord, as we keep our minds stayed on you, you've promised to keep us in peace. Lord, we just invite your presence and power tonight. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be glorified in everything that is said and done. Lord, that you would anoint us to do the work that you've called us to do. We pray for souls tonight to be saved. We pray that, Lord, as the message goes out via the live stream, that it would reach many souls. And Lord, we pray that, Father God, someone would accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior tonight. Lord, we commit all into your hands. May everything be done for only your glory and for your praise. And Lord, we again, we just thank you. We look forward to what you're going to do. May you have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good evening, everyone. Man, it is great to be back in the house of God tonight. We trust that you come once again with your cup turned up, expecting a blessing, but also to be a blessing to someone. Right. You never know just what a, a handshake or a, a, just a, a kind word or a, a, smile, a, a smile on your face, what it can do to help someone else right. down life's road. Amen. Right. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. If you're watching via live stream, we want to welcome you into our worship service as well. And we want you to settle back. We want you to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness right along with us tonight. We're kind of going to go a little old school, I guess, tonight and sing a couple songs here that probably everybody knows. Let's all stand and let's sing I'll Fly Away. Some glad morning when this life is over. I'll fly away.
Bye. 
something about those old songs. I was thinking, when I sing those songs, I think about my childhood. And I remember sitting on the front pew, my mom would, mom and dad would go sing, you know, different churches and do stuff. And I remember sitting on the front pew just about every church that I went to, and we would sing those songs, I'll Fly Away in Victory in Jesus. And every time I think about those songs, it brings me back to my upbringing. You know, Pastor was talking about that young lady that was talking about hating her parents, and I've seen that too, Pastor. I'll tell you, it about broke my heart. I'm, so, I'm thankful. I, if you were raised in a Christian home, you ought to get up every morning and thank God that you were raised in that kind of family. And I'm going to tell you something. I know uh, our kids today, it breaks my heart. I'm not mad at our kids. I'm not mad at the way they act. It just breaks my heart to see them act that way. And uh, so we need to really, we really need to remember our young people and our leaders and stuff in the days we're living in. Listen, I know God's in control and I know God has everything. I know He puts kingdoms in place and takes them out. I know that. But I, but I, I worry about their souls and I worry about their condition. And I'm going to tell you something. They haven't had what we, most of us have had that are older. And I'm just thankful today uh, as I sing those songs. I think about how they taught me and took me to church. They drug me every time the doors were open. They brought me to church. And I thank God for that. So before we go to prayer, we want to remember uh, there was a couple changes. There was a couple announcements, really, I want to make real quick. Um, first of all, the offering. Don't forget about the offering. Um, Brother George is only going to be here from 10 to 12. He's going to start cutting his hours down because people are starting to come back. So make sure you make a mental note of that because if you come here at 1 o'clock, the doors are shut, and you'll say, where's Brother George? But he'll be here from 10 to 12 every day uh, still. And you can still pay through PayPal if you can't make it to church. And I know there's a lot of people still hesitating about coming back to church, but come back and be with us, man. I miss you. You know, everybody misses you. And uh, it's, not just the, it's not just the offering and the things that are going on, but it's, you know, it's, it's your presence. So think about that. You can also mail checks to the church, or you can just drop it off and when you come in and out of the building until we can start passing the plate again. But just think about those things. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to cut some hedges in the morning. Uh, we're going to try to be here about, I'm going to try to be here about 7.30 or 8. Uh, if you've got uh, hedge trimmers and you'd like to come and help, uh, we'd appreciate all the help that, that you can, that you can, we can have. I know there's a few people that's already uh, dedicated to come out, but that's going to be at 8. And whenever you can get here, I mean, I'm going to start about 8 because I have to get done so I can go help Dan put an air conditioner in. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to start about 8 o'clock, so if you want to be here, uh, we'd, we'd look really like to have you uh, come in. All right, before we go to prayer, just uh, keep remembering our church, remember our pastor, keep remembering him every day in your prayers. I'm telling you, I, was, I, was, uh, I listen to some of the ministry on the radios and stuff anymore, and I'm telling you, you know, you, we don't know how good we got it. And uh, I, I hope and pray that we continue uh, to pray for him every day and pray that God would be with him. You know, and I know that all these people have a lot of needs, uh, stuff, but the greatest need that we all have is the salvation. And we need to, ha- we need to be bold, you know. Paul said, you know, in the, after he start, went through the, the armor in that sixth chapter of Ephesians, at the end he said that I might pray that I might open my mouth boldly. You know, and we need to have that in ourselves. We need to pray for ourselves. People say, well, I don't like praying for ourselves. You better be praying for yourself. You better take a lot of time praying for yourself because you can't help anybody unless you're right. And I hope and pray that you'll do that. Uh, still remember Brian. Uh, he's in a lot of pain. He had to come home from work a little bit early today. He went to work, but he he come home about noon, uh, Pastor said. Uh, he's going to have to have surgery in about two weeks, probably to cut it out. I guess they can't seem to get it out. So I'll tell you, anybody that's had a kidney stone knows what I'm talking about. And uh, they, they, he needs a lot of prayer. Uh, Joe Perez's family, uh, we've been talking about Joe lately. He passed away. We want to remember his family in prayer. Paul Deaton, I heard today, got to come home. And, you know, I, 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 was, I, was, I meant to tell you this, Sherlana, but I got an email. Somebody said, now, he's not 85, he's 81. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, I, I'm going to tell you, Charlene had told me. No, I'm just kidding. But I want to make sure I quoted that out. You don't, don't want to be older than what you are. But anyway, he got to come home, and he's doing some better. still looking pale, but he got to come home. We thank God for that. Sister Wanda Hicks, 
the Lord touched her. She's being released today, so we thank God for that. Catherine South has a broken hand. Maude O'Hare, still remember her in prayer. Talked to Jimbo this week uh, on the phone, and he's got to get operated on the 16th, and the doctors don't want him coming back till then. I was just kind of concerned about him, so I gave him a call. Uh, but he's doing okay. He's just got to have surgery the 16th of this month, so keep him in your prayer. Leanna Bryant, uh, Pauletta's cousin, is in a lot of pain still. Aaron Osborne, we talked about that, which is Don and Tammy Schwartz's son. Uh, he's been on our prayer list for a while. Donna Larson and Joyce Angel both have to have some eye surgery, and then I got Donna Larson has to have some surgery, eye surgery on Monday, so I don't want to forget that. And then um, Wilma Krause still needs our prayers. Uh, pray that God would, you know, be with her, and she's getting better, but we want to remember them. Ron Alfrey also, and then Donna Jenkins is in Arlington uh, Nursing Home. And remember all of our people in the nursing homes. I'm telling you, that's really a sad situation that they're in. They're, I heard they're starting to open it up a little bit, so pray, pray that God will continue to do that. The Edgewood team, Kelly Nagel, uh, still needs our prayers, and then we're still, we still want to remember uh, Bennett Yarber, and then Barb Cash, too, Tina's mom. We want to remember her. I'm going to have Brother Rob McCarty come and lead us in a word of prayer. Let's all gather around the altar. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay. Okay, let's remember Bill. Bill Mo. Yes. Amen. And pray for you too. Amen. Let's pray for the country also. We're in, we're in need of help. The Bible said in perilous times. I'm looking for the Lord to come any time with all this going on. And uh, we don't know how good we got it. I did a lot of time overseas in third world countries. People starving to death. They don't have this problem. They're too busy trying to get something to eat. So tonight... Let's pray for the country, and let's pray for those that's not able to make it tonight. And those who are here tonight, may we leave with something that we didn't have when we come in, and hopefully that the Holy Ghost reaches your heart, and the message will get you. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. We don't have anybody else to turn to, because you've got the words of the eternal life. And Lord, many years ago, when I bowed my knee to Christ... I'm not bound it to a man, but I bowed it to Jesus Christ. I, oh, I was in a horrible pit when the light shined down. I, oh, it was almost blinding. I, and when God began to speak to my heart through the Holy Ghost, I, I come out of that horrible pit. <clears throat> in the Bible, David said, remember that horrible pit that you came out of? Every once in a while, we need to take inventory. Realize that that Christ has saved us from a sinful world. Not look around and see what we can do to please man, but we must be about our Father's business tonight. God, there's people on the outside on live stream tonight. I'm asking them tonight by faith, touch that phone or TV or whatever they're communicating with. Let the healing power of God uh, reach down the healer. He's in the house tonight. Uh, by his stripes, we're already healed. Uh, God, tonight, we so many times uh, our brothers and sisters are out sick, uh, and they wonder if anybody cares. Uh, I pray tonight that the Holy Spirit uh, visits them in the living room or in the bedroom, wherever they're at, hospital. God is not bound by time and space. Uh, he's everywhere. Uh, tonight we're asking a great Holy Ghost function over this service tonight. We're not looking around to see who's uh, smiling, who's accepting it. Tonight I'm not pitchforking it on my neighbor, but tonight, God, I'm the one in need tonight. I want to hear the Word of God. I want to make sure I make it. I, oh, on the way of a highway, highway of holiness, Highway 35 tonight, as Isaiah called it. I, God, we know tonight on that way, I, we see signs of detour, I, discouragement here, I, give up over there. I, it's not real. I, somebody said something wrong. I, 
God, we're not looking to the left or the right. Uh, my eyes is on the prize of the high calling uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, with tonight, I'm not looking for somebody to support me, uh, but because my mind is fixed upon the Word of God tonight. I'm glad I've been delivered, set free, and God tonight, I thank God tonight, He made provisions that we could make it home. And God, we pray for the singers tonight. God, we want to move a God in them that where they can't even stand still to sing. They got to move. And God, we pray for a Holy Ghost unction over them tonight. God, we just expect them to perform. Uh, but God, tonight, isn't it much better when the Holy Ghost comes uh, and He begins to deliver? And tonight, last but not least, we pray for our pastor tonight. And God, we pray tonight that you set him afire. The gospel of Jesus Christ. I, I know he's dedicated his life to Christ, I, but he never gets above that one that's a preacher. That, that's the one we need in the house. The Holy Ghost pouring out that vessel tonight. Bless Brother Kevin like he'd never been blessed before. It may be Wednesday night, but it might be the last night. And tonight, regardless, let's enjoy the power of God. Maybe one day we can't come to church even before we leave this world. And we'll look back. There's nothing like being in God's house. I've watched it on live stream and none of that, that's good. If I know I couldn't make it, that's good. But Lord, it was so wonderful when I could come in the presence of the saints and hear that live word of God in singing and preaching. My, my, what a supper. What a, what a dedication these people have. We appreciate each and every one in this building. It works the work of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen.
be in prayer for our pastor tonight, Kevin Beck. Well, glory to His name. Thank you, Jesus. We honor Him tonight. He is our honored guest. We love Him. More, He loves us even more. You know, when it comes down to it, there are only two directions that we're traveling spiritually. We're either drawing near to God or we're drawing back from God. We're either drawing nigh, as the Bible says, or we're being drawn away. There's no middle ground. For example, James tells us in James 4, Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. And then it says, Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. In other words, the gospel has a two-fold, two-edged cleansing and purifying effect. I thank God that Christ offers a salvation that cleanses us from sin. But also, He wants to sanctify us and purify our hearts from double-mindedness. That means to be half-hearted. God doesn't want us to be half-hearted. The Bible says in Psalm 73, 28, For it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. How many know it's good for us to draw near to God? That's the right thing to do. And you know, that's needful in the day which we live. To regularly, consistently, faithfully draw near to God. The other direction is the opposite direction, spiritually, and that is the direction of drawing back from God. And you know that happens more often than we think. That folks do draw back on God. Just as we hear these words in Hebrews 10 verse 38, he says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, My soul shall have no pleasure in him. In other words, God is not pleased when we draw back on him. But let us be as those who it says in the next verse, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So we're not to be of those who draw back unto perdition, unto ruin or destruction. You know, I have seen this happen more than one time. I've seen situations and I've seen people who have drawn back on God. But on the other hand, I thank God for those who do persevere by faith and believe to the saving of the soul. Those who fight the good fight of faith. Folks, how many know we are in a spiritual battle? We are to be warriors of the cross. We are to be soldiers in the Lord's army. We are to march onward and upward and forward and heavenward. Friend, until we reach our heavenly home, we've got to keep pressing forward, pressing onward. I want to call your attention tonight to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the third chapter, is where our message comes from this evening. Would you please stand with me? We began in verse 12, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 12. Go and proclaim these words towards the north, toward the north, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Verse 14. 
Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. I want to read that again. <laughs> I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Our message tonight is entitled, The Comeback Call of God. The Comeback Call of God. Join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you tonight, Lord, for this evening's service and Father, for your spirit already moving in our midst, and we pray you would encourage every heart. We pray, God, that this message would go forth. We believe it is a needful and timely message for our day. And, Father, we pray that you would help those that need to hear this message, somehow that this message would reach them. Lord, we're concerned about those that are wandering. We're concerned about those that may be in a spiritually backslidden or falling condition. We're concerned, Lord, that they get back while there's yet time. And, Father, we're concerned for revival tonight. We pray, Holy Ghost of God, that you would just take over, that you would bring the fire from God from heaven. Lord, that you would touch hearts, touch lips, touch our lives. Father, we pray you would revive us and strengthen us. Lord, that we would not just play church. Help us to be the church of God. That the, Jesus said that he would build and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. And so, Lord, we're thankful tonight. God, help us to preach without fear, favor, without holding back, or, Lord, without any hindrance tonight, we ask. May the Spirit of God have free course and liberty. We give you all the honor. Thank you, Father, for this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, we hear the call of God through the prophet Jeremiah. The call of God through the prophet Jeremiah for the people of God to come back to God. First, I believe it's good to be reminded in this day which we live, the biblical call of God. Folks, it is God who calls us. I still believe in the callings of God. I believe out of the Scriptures, the Holy Word of God, the Spirit of God, He breathes forth life and He takes the Word. And I want to tell you, when the Word and the Spirit get a hold of a man or a woman, you better hold on. You're going to see what God can do with a person. The Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4, he calls it the high calling of God. He said in Philippians 3 verse 14, he said, I press toward the mark, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God's calling is a high calling. It is a high calling in Christ for each of us to hear and to follow. I don't believe there's a higher calling than God's calling for a man or a woman to come out of this world, to come out of sin, and to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no higher calling, my friend, this side of heaven. But it is also a holy calling of God. A holy calling. Second Timothy 1 9, the Bible says, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. My friend, listen, God is calling us with a high calling, a holy calling. But I believe that speaks of a heavenly calling as well. Listen, before this old world began, God planned in Christ a high and heavenly and holy calling for you and I. He knew we would be here. He knew that our lives would be here. Thank God tonight. He were not here by accident. We're not here without direction. We're not here without a calling. But God is calling tonight to each and every one of us, my friend. We need to hear the call of God. We see that old hymn, Called unto holiness, church of our God, purchase of Jesus, redeemed by His blood, called from the world and its idols to flee, called from the bondage of sin to be free. 
Holiness unto the Lord is our watchword and song. Holiness unto the Lord as we're marching along. Sing it, shout it loud and long. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. One of the great old time Church of God preachers and writers, Lawrence Chestnut, he well put it concerning the New Testament church. He said the New Testament church refers to those whom God has called out of sin, the world, and false religious systems. Who are not only saved from sin, but regenerated, meaning empowered to remain free from sin and live holy in this present world. The church of God then is simply the company of God's called out ones, having received Christ as Lord and Savior. The meaning and the term of ecclesia is of much value in furnishing us a correct view of what the true biblical church is. The church is made up of men and women who have heard the call of Jesus and have come out and followed the call and thank God tonight. He has a people, my friend. Listen, in the day which we live, I'm glad God has a remnant. He does have a remnant. And His people are found all over this world. Those who have heard the call of God. We're certainly living in a day where many don't seem to hear any of God's callings at all. Many aren't listening to the callings of God. But I can tell you, Jeremiah listened. And Jeremiah heard. And Jeremiah understood the call of God. As a matter of fact, if you go back into chapter 1, in Jeremiah here, we hear in verse 4 it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. My friend, that ought to shut every door of every abortion clinic on this face of this earth, my friend. God said, I knew you before you were even born. God had a plan. Listen, God had a plan for Jeremiah, and I believe tonight, and God had a call upon his life, and I believe God has a plan for your life as well. You know, Jeremiah didn't feel adequate. He didn't feel he was sufficient. He didn't feel he was qualified or capable of what God was calling him to do. Notice in verse 6 there of Jeremiah's first chapter, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Can you imagine telling God that? You can imagine the Lord just kind of looking down at Jeremiah saying, What are you talking about? Verse 7, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand, notice, and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. In other words, Jeremiah's call was summed up as this. His word in my mouth. My life in his hands. That would sure settle a lot of questions about what people would want to do with their lives. That you allow God's Word to be in your mouth and you allow your life to be in His hands. And listen, God could use you just like He used Jeremiah, just like He's used anybody in this world. God can use those who are willing. Later, God had to give this charge to Jeremiah in verse 17, he said, Thou therefore gird up thy loins, and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. In other words, God's calling comes with some boldness, doesn't it? It amazes me how God can take someone backwards and save them, and He can call him or her. He can touch their lives with the power of the Holy Ghost from heaven. He can fill them up and He can send them out for Christ 
with a purpose beyond themselves, a purpose greater than their life, and it is for the glory of God. I am amazed at what God can do with a man or a woman who hears the call of God. That doesn't mean it will always be easy. It doesn't mean that you will always be popular or you will be accepted. When Jeremiah got down a bit, and he did, he reached a time of discouragement where I find many Christians get to that place. The Bible says over in Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9, Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more of his name. But his word, notice, his word was in my heart as a burning fire. And in my bones, shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Just like that song our group powerfully sings up here. I can't quit when there's a fire burning in my soul. Listen, when God's fire and his word is in your bones and in your heart, you're not going to quit on God. You might get discouraged. You might get a time to go through the valley. But thank God there's one who's greater that's in us than he that's in this world. Man, just like we're reminded as Paul said to the church. You remember when he said to the, spoke to the church of God in Corinth. He said in verse 26 of that first chapter. For ye see your calling, brethren. Notice how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But notice, God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. In other words, God calls and chooses not necessarily those of a wealth of knowledge, not necessarily those that have a wealth of talent, not necessarily those that have a wealth of all of the things in this world, but God chooses those that are willing. Why? Why does He do that? Well, Paul answers it, verse 29, that no flesh should glory in His presence. No flesh shall glory in His presence. Nothing will bring revival quicker into the midst of a congregation when we confess to, a, to God and say, Lord, I want nothing but your glory. Nothing at all, but I want to see your glory. I want you to get the glory. I want your presence to be manifested. We need more of God today than anything else. Friend, I want to tell you, this world is hurting and there's a church that's limping through the world. She's not the power that God's called her to be. Why? Because she's not manifesting the glory of God. In many instances, the glory of God has departed. Now, God gave Jeremiah a specific calling. We call it tonight the comeback call of God. How many know Jesus is the king of comebacks? But Jeremiah got a specific calling from God with a specific message. In other words, God was using Jeremiah to call the people of God back to God. God's call to the backslider to return, to turn back to God and to come back. Notice God says to Jeremiah that what we read there in our text tonight. Chapter 3, verse 12. Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Listen, that was God's message to Israel. But I believe it's God's message to all. It's time to come back to God, to get back to God where you belong. God is calling you right now. You don't need to wait till you get more of a, a, a message from God. Listen, if you hear the voice of God, obey the voice of God. It's a dangerous place to be where you no longer hear the voice of God. Can you hear him calling you? Just as the old song says, I've wandered far away from God. 
Now I'm coming home. The paths of sin too long I've trod. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Open wide thine arms of love, Lord. I'm coming home. My friend, that thrills the heart of God. It makes the angels in heaven rejoice when a wayward child, son or daughter says, you know what, I've had enough of feeling away from God. I no longer want to be away from God. Lord, I'm coming home. I'm coming now. Lord, will you take me back? And thank God, my friend, the Father's waiting. He's waiting with open arms. You remember when Moses was a long time up on the mountain with God? And the people of God, they got antsy and it didn't take, it didn't take long for them to get into trouble. You know, I found that true. How many know when you raise kids and mom and dad are away, it don't take long for them to get in trouble. Right? And while Moses was up there talking to God on the mountain, God had written the commandments with his own finger on the tablets of stone. And then all of a sudden, Quickly, God says to Moses in Exodus 32, He says, They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I have commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Brother, God was angered. He was angered. But the people, how quickly they turned. And Moses kind of, he calmed God down, didn't he? He, 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 he reasoned with God not to destroy them. That what, that God would bring them out of Egypt and yet he would still destroy them. And so God was merciful. But when Moses came down the mountain and saw him, boy, it was a different story, wasn't it? Moses saw the people and he came down from the mountain. Moses got angry and he broke the tablets of God's commandments. Why? Because the people of God had broken God's commands. As Moses stands there before them, you can imagine, man, they had gotten, they had worked themselves up into a frenzy. There was such ungodliness that took over quickly. Moses calls, he looks out upon them, and the Bible records these words. Moses asks a question in Exodus 32, 26. He said, Who is on the Lord's side. Amen. Who's on the Lord's side? Come out right now. Give your testimony. Declare now. If you're on the Lord's side, then you step up and you step out for God. You declare which way you're going. Friend, I want to tell you, we're in a time that we have never seen before. And I believe it's time that the people of God say, you know what? I'm tired of what's going on. I'm on the Lord's side. I'm not on this side. I'm not on that side. It's not about politics. It's not about race. It's not about color. It's sin, brother. And those that are on the Lord's side will follow the Lord. Stop pretending. Moses further, he said, okay, I want you to take the next step. He said, verse 29, consecrate yourselves today to the Lord. Even every man upon his own son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. You know, it don't take long if we're not watchful. If we're not careful, if we're not diligent. To get to a place where we don't belong. And we find out, you know what? I'm on the wrong side here. How quickly, if we allow Satan to get us sidetracked. Listen. How quickly, if we allow the devil to get us discouraged. Or how many have allowed someone or something to lead them to turn aside. Do you know there are people that have allowed other people to turn them from the Lord? Can I tell you, 
if I followed people, I would no longer be in ministry. We follow the Lord. We're on the Lord's side. Every problem in every church has about, been about your side or my side. But there is no problem when we're on the Lord's side. Proverbs 14.14 14 says unto us, Backsliding is being filled with our own ways. Write that down. Backsliding is being filled with our own ways. Proverbs 14, 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. In other words, those who turn away from God will reap what they sow. But those who are faithful, likewise, God will reward. Another thing we see is Scripture tells us, number two, backsliding is a miserable and unhappy place. How many know that's true? Well, back in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19, it says, Thy own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, that th my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. Backsliding is a miserable and unhappy place. Many don't realize in God's presence is fullness of joy. But bitterness, gloom, trouble, joylessness abounds in that place away from God. You just asked the prodigal son, what did you find in being away from home? What did you find in that far off place? He found waste. He found want. And he needed a wake up call. Listen, I believe there are many tonight in that same condition. They're wanting more of God. They feel like they're wasting their life. And they need a wake-up call from God. And you know what? If that's what you want, that's what you'll get. You will reap what you sow. I have seen people who have done business with God, and God did business with them. I've seen people come and broken, saying, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of being joyless. I'm tired of... Of, of, of struggling. I'm tired of being discouraged and being beat up and beat down. There's got to be something better than this. And I want to tell you, when you lay it all on the line before God, God will give you something better than you got. Well, thirdly, backsliding is a worse off condition. How many know that's true? I'm glad you all were honest tonight. <laughs> Peter tells us, 2 Peter 2.20, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, notice, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. In other words, that condition of being entangled again and drawing away from God is worse off than before you came to God. And listen, that is found to be true over and over and over just as God warns. I believe one of the strongest warnings Jesus gave on backsliding is found in the 24th chapter of Matthew when he said in verse 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That means that you once loved God, but now you don't love God. That means that once you had a closeness with God, but now that has dwindled down. That means once you knew the fire of God in your heart, but the fire has gone out. But the next verse says, and I love this, He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Listen, 
Tonight, again, God says through the prophet, Go, verse 12, Jeremiah 3, and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. And I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. The key, the key I want you to notice is the next verse. Jeremiah 3.13 is the key. God says, Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. You know, I believe every Christian, everybody that truly is saved, God will guide them with his voice. With his spirit. He gives us that inner monitor, that inner guide. I, I liken it to when I when I first got saved, I really didn't have any Christian friends. I didn't hardly know the Bible. I knew enough that the Bible said in first John one nine, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And according to God's word, I settled it and I asked God. I repented of my sinful, selfish ways. And I believe the night I gave my heart to Jesus, He gave me something I didn't have. But I remember from that point forward, there became a voice that would begin to tell me right from wrong. When I would slip up, He was right there to tell me, now you need to make that right. When I would say a bad word, yeah, I used to say bad words. <laughs> he was right there to put his put the mouth his hand on my mouth and say, you know what? That's not the way you need to talk anymore. When I had desire to do something that I ought not do, he was right there to show me. He was there to tell me where I belonged and where I didn't belong. Guiding my steps all the way. And I'm here to tell you, my friend, so many years later, I gave my heart to God in the fall of 1987 in the middle of the night in Oxford, Ohio. And I can tell you, now in 2020, God is still guiding. He's still speaking. And thank God I can still hear His voice. Amen. Jeremiah says, Acknowledge thine iniquity. You've transgressed against the Lord. In other words, heed the call of God. Come back to Him. Confess to Him. Lord, I'm sorry. I've messed up. In verse 14, He says, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. You see, my friend, it is possible tonight to have such a relationship with God based upon what Jesus Christ has done for you and I. I'm glad that Jesus came from heaven to earth. I'm glad that He came to live a sinless life. I'm thankful that He died on the cross for me and for you. I'm thankful that He paid the price with His own blood. I'm thankful tonight, my friend, that He finished the work of our redemption, that when we look to Him, He can save us, He can deliver us. I know they buried Him, but thank God He came up out of that grave. And He's alive tonight. He's seated at the right hand of God. And the Bible says, brother, in Romans ten thirteen, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's something the devil don't like. But my friend, the devil can't stop. You see, there are some, they need to come back to God. Some once tasted of the goodness of God and have backslid like Israel did. Listen, I believe God will do everything He has to do to try to get a child back to Him. If you've ever had a child that is wayward, you know the grief that it caused a parent's heart. 
You know the burden that you carry. I think sometimes God gives a special burden just for parents, for their children. Some of you know what I'm talking about, don't you? But finally, I want you to notice what God says here in Jeremiah, the third chapter, verse 15. Notice. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. In other words, those who care enough to proclaim what God calls us to. I have found prevention from backsliding. Hear me. Prevention from backsliding is the best medicine. How would I prevent from backsliding? First of all, pursue God with all your heart. Say, I want to go deeper than I've ever gone, Lord. Take me deeper. Take me higher. Keep a strong devotional life. Keep the fire burning in your own heart. Listen, I can't give you the fire that God gives me in my own heart, but I can tell you where to get the fire. I can tell you where to get the fire. You've got to go to the same place that anybody gets fire from heaven. You've got to go before the throne of God. And friend, when you pursue closely and you press in, listen, and when you're purposeful to not only live saved, but you want to live sanctified. You're not ashamed to say, listen, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't care if it hair lips the devil. God gives us boldness. Not that we boast of anything of ourselves, but what God gives us. We got to testify. And then to prevent from backsliding, we need to be open to the light of God. Listen, there are some people, they've been a Christian so long, and they just sit there like this. I'm not picking on your brother Paul. <laughs> I, as soon as I said that, I looked down and he's looking at me like, you know. <laughs> I'm not picking on you, brother. I mean, it's like, some say, you can't teach me anything new. I'm going to tell you what, every time I get into the Word of God, listen, there's freshness from God. There's fresh manna from heaven. The reason people begin to dry up. And begin to lose the fire and zeal and love is because they neglect the very thing that God has given to sustain them spiritually. Listen. Backsliding does not need to happen. It does not need to happen. And in case you feel tonight you're wayward, I can guarantee you, God has not given up on you. He still loves you. You know, in Jesus' day, there were those who walked with Jesus, but then they drew back. They were actually walking with Christ in person. And the Bible records this, and we'll close with this. In John 6, verse 66, From that time many of His disciples went back and walked no more with Him. Listen. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? It must have, it must have grieved the Savior's heart. The pain went deep. But I think the Lord was pleased with Simon Peter's response. It says in the next verse, verse 68, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Amen. Thou hast the words of eternal life. Which will you be? Of those who draw near or of those who draw back? I want you to stand with me tonight as we prepare a song of invitation. Oh, dear Lord, have your way tonight. Please, in every heart and in every life. Oh, Jesus, we need more of you than anything. Lord, this world is just out of control. I pray that you would help every man or woman 
young and old, to find a place of refuge in Christ tonight. If you're watching tonight and tonight you want to recommit your life and heart to Jesus, would you do that right now? If you're here right now, just step out and come forward. If you would like to come pray for someone that you feel they need to come back to God, you step out and come and pray for them. Pray this prayer, Lord. Create in me a clean heart, please. The Lord, renew in me a right spirit. Please, Jesus. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me. Please, restore unto me the joy of salvation. If you need that restored tonight, the Lord's here. He's ready to give it to you. Once you step out, come to Him. Find a place to pray. Mom, Dad, you come pray tonight. Lead the way. Pray for those children tonight that are wayward. Pray that God would send them a wake up. Get a hold of their hearts. Lord, give us a greater passion for Thee than we've ever had. A deeper burden for souls. Dear God, we pray that You would strengthen Your people, strengthen Your church, that we not be wearied in well-doing. For we shall reap if we faint not. Help us to sow the good seed, the soil in our hearts. Lord, we pray tonight, put a rebuke upon what Satan's doing. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke you, Satan. We plead the blood of Christ tonight. We pray, oh God, have your way. Father, may someone tonight get victory in this place. May the joy of the Lord ring out. And may there be joy in heaven over those that have wandered away coming back to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. If nothing else, come and pray for the church. We've got many that still haven't come back. And we know they want to come back, but we know that they're waiting for the right time. And let's just pray that God would strengthen them and encourage them and help them. Would you do that tonight as well? Let's sing.
Great, great message tonight. Praise, praise God for what He's done. Okay. It's Wednesday night. Let's gather around the middle ones here, Brother George says, and uh, stand just stand where you're comfortable, and we'll be dismissed in prayer. <laughs>